Good morning, Stephen. Good morning, Christopher. A happy show Tuesday, number 54, coming to you live from Tokyo and Fukuoka, Japan. This is the nerds behind the Japan Distilled podcast, and we're, we're here for the second volume of the second edition, if, if an edition is an entire year, the second year of the Japan Distilled hosted show Tuesday. And we're going to drink some shochu today, but before we do that, and as people start to pile in here, let's start with our, our normal booze news. Talk about what's going on. What's caught your eye recently, Stephen? Well, the uh, the Japanese gins just keep rolling out. And I think that's a <laughs> phenomenon that's happening all over the place uh, around the world. But uh, here in Japan, I think, you know, when gin first started to appear, Japanese gin, it was really not of particularly, I don't want to say it, it wasn't of high quality. I, I just, I think they were still experimenting and trying to figure things out. There's mm -hmm. predominantly a very citrus forward style that became yeah. dominant because there's a lot of native citrus here. But uh, I think some of the distilleries that have gotten into it started to take it quite seriously. And I'm pretty excited to try some of these new expressions that are being, uh, uh, being released. Um, we know our friends at uh, Osuzuyama had created this this gin, uh, which, as you can see on the label, actually says original. And this was made with juniper, sancho, local citrus, ginger, sakaki, umami, etc. So I thought that was a fun way of, of describing what's in the bottle. Uh, really, really enjoy this gin. Um, big, big yeah. fan. <clears throat> and then they actually just ended up coming out with a second expression which says uh, kumquat. Okay. What's that, and King it's... Kong? I guess yep. kumquat might be King Kong. Yeah, I think it might be. So you got kumquat, okay. juniper, sancho, and ginger is what's in this. I have not opened this yet. I haven't tried it, but we'll definitely do that on a future, future episode. Um, so exciting new gem from one of our favorite distilleries. Really curious how that's going to compare to the original. And... Uh, that's that's what I end up finding uh, is that every time I turn around, I feel like there's a new gin coming out. <laughs> yeah, there really yeah. is. Um, I I I recall at least two or three new ones over the past month that mm -hmm. have hit Instagram and elsewhere, and and uh, yeah, I mean that's that's something we're gonna have to focus on quite a bit moving forward is gin, gin, gin. But and you know, I reminds me, I I just. I had a delivery yesterday evening. Haven't even opened this yet, and I believe this is a gin. <laughs> and um, so let's do that right now. Yeah, the, the one that had been recommended to me, actually, this is not new by any means, but it is a Japanese gin. Uh, somebody had suggested uh, is that the Sakurao. Sakurao? Yeah, I have not actually tried it, but a couple of people had commented on social media that this is their favorite Japanese gin. For real? And having not had it, I had to I had to acquire a bottle, and I'll give but that a try when. No, when we start to taste through some gins, uh, which obviously we will be doing a gin uh, podcast episode in the not too distant future, and we've been starting to prepare our our gins that we will be trying for the podcast. So, um. yep, this is it. So you you probably remember the story better than I do, but this is the Den Noshin 1812 Gin Extreme Juniper, um, yep. which sounds like. A party in a bottle it's that's right so really dark that's that was that's a uh i guess a not a really a revival but a, an ode to the the first gin ever made in japan uh which was actually made in dejima in nagasaki and a, a sake brewer in uh in nagasaki prefecture not sure if in the, in the city or not but they've they decided to try to revive it based on the notes that they could find written about the 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 gin and how people reacted to it and apparently there was so much juniper expressed in the gin that was made by i think it was a japanese uh man who was working with the dutch and so he was trying to make something for them that was familiar to them because at the time they were, i think the dutch were at war and so there was a blockade so the dutch weren't yeah, able so to they get, couldn't their, get their normal their gin right yep and so the the japanese man kindly decided to try to make a gin but apparently just put in way too much juniper and the, and the Dutch were like, <laughs> this is just, it's a little so bit too funny. much juniper. And so they decided to recreate that. Some 
really curious. It looks like it's got some golden color. So is it cast? Oh, it's very. It's yeah. It's it's got some age to it. Really it interesting. It says. Um, yeah, Macedonian juniper, of course, coriander, angelica. So that's angelica keske um, from Croatia. It's hmm. it uses jozo arukoru, so it's just the straight. Um, you know the the, the regular korui shochu essentially. Okay. And the multiply distilled stuff and the made in. Kumamoto apparently it also has Honkak shochu, but they only say, "Huh? <laughs> oh, it's made by this. It's made by this company apparently, in Naga Nagasaki, and then Zarameto. So that's we were just talking about that sugar last night. Zarame is like a a coarse dark sugar for cooking. Mm. Okay, and <laughs> extreme. It says extreme juniper, like whoop. <laughs> so yeah. they recreated that. I wonder if they actually used three times the amount of juniper that was normally called for. I get, I'm yeah. not going to open this now because it's probably going to blow my head off. But yeah, probably best worth waiting. That may be where the color from color comes from is from the sugar. If it if there's no mention of cask That's aging. a good point. It could it could be because it does not yeah. it does not mention any casks on here. At least just with a cursory run through the blurb. There's a nice little. It's. I'm sorry. It's blown yeah. out, but you can see the flags, yeah. um, the okay. Japanese flag like and the, the Japanese Dutch, flag. And the Dutch flag. So this is a very much a, yeah. a in friendship. A lot of gin. A lot of early gin, as I understand it, was quite sweet. It had a lot of sugars added to them. Okay. Um, and and so I think that that's what they're really trying to do is get back to that classic style before everything became a London dry gin. Uh, the the um, the early gins were apparently very sweet. So that that may be quite reminiscent of what would have been made back at that time. Did they put like a year on it, like around when the uh, that original? Uh, well, it says 1812 right here. Okay. Man, yeah. my so that's like oh, I gotta block my lamp in order to see anything. Yeah. You got that? Yeah. Yeah, and that's actually the a picture of uh, Dejima Island. That's which Dejima is right the, here. The island uh, in the in the harbor where uh, the Dutch had, they were required to stay in Dejima and they could only leave Dejima uh, with permission from the Japanese. Uh, yeah, because so it's they'd... essentially an artificial island where they stuck out of the, all of the, the strangers. All the foreigners, that's right. And they basically lived on that island. You can visit, they, they've uh, reconstructed it. You can walk through and get a tour. They've got a lot of the yeah, history. Yeah, basically it's just a really part nice of the museum. Part of Nagasaki city now, downtown, mm -hmm. right? It's very much been engulfed. It has yeah, been yeah. And built around. It's, it's actually it's it's nicely located because it's right near um, the Chinatown, which uh, one of the nicer Chinatowns in Japan, actually. So you can get some great Chinese food and walk over and have the tour. And it's also very conveniently located uh, next to the uh, Nagasaki Bus Terminal Hotel. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was wondering if you were going to get a reference in there. <laughs> yeah, that's that's for our friend Tom Kretschmar, who uh, we we took a trip together, the three of us. And we just told, we didn't tell Tom what we were doing for the weekend. He just was coming in from New York. Christopher flew down from Tokyo. We started in Fukuoka and we did this basically about a three day tour through the west side of Kyushu. We went over into Saga Prefecture and Kodatsu, went to a fish market. Tom's a huge, this guy makes sushi at home. Like he's very serious about, yeah. about his fish. And uh, so we went to this really nice fish, famous fish market in Saga. And then we didn't tell him what we were doing next, but we took, we took like about a what three three four hour train ride down the coast to get to Nagasaki City, and we check in at the bus terminal hotel, and it's like, what the hell is going? Getting geeked on? out pretty hard about that. Wait a second, yeah. we're staying in a bus terminal. Yes, we are. We certainly yeah. are. <laughs> and it was a decent hotel. It's, it's essentially it a business fun. hotel. It's just got really unfortunate naming. Um, <laughs> but that was that was a fun fun weekend, and yeah, but um, I think when you I think you guys both had to head out. I think Tom was actually heading back. to to the states or maybe he had to get back to tokyo for something and you did as well so i, I went and did a uh, my own private walking tour of dejima that afternoon before i headed back to fukuoka i don't uh, know if i ever told you that i probably did i think you might have mentioned it yeah i had to scoot back up north though yeah yeah cool yeah. i need to get back to nagasaki soon yeah but, definitely uh unfortunately can't go down there right now because everything's still a little bit sideways but anyways let's yeah. get into the let's get back to the title of this 
episode, episode 54, and we're talking so, about aromatics. Can you give us a definition? What is your definition of an aromatic shochu? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. I think, and and it, I, I didn't we didn't even plan the booze news. To, I think we're getting good at this because we didn't plan the booze news to be about gin, which is full of botanicals, right? Um, yeah. In talking about aromatic shochu, but for me, how I define aromatic shochu, and and I think you would largely agree with this, if not one hundred percent, is uh, all of the approved ingredients that are not actually f uh, starches that can be converted to fermentable sugars. Uh, I would classify as aromatics because they're only going in the fer fermentation to create uh, aromas and flavors, right? They're not really contributing any alcohol production. Uh, and so this would be green tea, uh, shiso leaf, or perilla, as, as it's sometimes called in the West. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, and there's a, there's a bunch of these things. And, and those aromatics, as we, I used to sort of derisively call them gift shop shochus because they were sort of the oddballs that you'd often find in Japanese gift shops um, made from local agricultural products, but usually contract distilled in another prefecture and then sold in the gift shop in, you know, some little town somewhere that happened to grow, uh, you know, mushrooms or, or whatever. And then you'd have shochus made from those, but they're really all made down in Kyushu, most of them. So, yeah, and right. I didn't really have a great a great opinion of them because they all just seemed like these almost gimmicky sorts of things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's like, what was it? Deep fried, Mar deep fried Mars bars and things like that, you know, just sort of, you know, I sort of, it sort of fell in that end of the culinary spectrum in my mind okay. for a long time. But then I yeah. started to taste some good ones, right? And there's some real craftsmanship that goes into these and there's, there's some beautiful expressions. And, and so you and I put our heads together thinking and said, why don't we call them aromatic shochus? Because it's a, kinder term than gift shop showed you and mm -hmm. uh and there, there there are lovely expressions and we're still discovering them they're hard to find you know these are made in pretty limited production yeah they, uh, they tend to be i i often liken them to using hops in beer uh, ma many times you do have okay. hops added pure purely for their aroma you have mm -hmm. bittering mm -hmm. hops you have aromatic hops and so they don't add any anything that can goose the alcoholic content of the drink necessarily or not without some serious finagling. And mm -hmm. so it's, yeah, it really is a, a seasoning on the drink, if, if you mm -hmm. will. But it is part of the fermentation. So these are not, it's not like it's being steeped in the already distilled shochu. It's pre-distillation that these go into the fermentation. So that's an important mm -hmm. distinction. They are technically still a honkak shochu. And one, uh, you know, there's a couple that are available in the States, at least, and maybe also in parts of Europe. And that's, uh, and I think it's a great starting point for a lot of people in terms of these very aromatic shochu. And that would be the Mizu lineup, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Mizu, uh, their main expression, obviously, is Saga Barley, which is simply a barley shochu. Really, really nicely made. But then they, they followed that with, uh, their first, or I guess their second expression was lemongrass, which technically is not an improved ingredient in Japan. So yeah, I, I got that, that is right here actually. Technically not a honkaku shochu, but it is a otsurui shochu. So it is a single distilled. You know, it's made in the with koji, so it's it's made in the honkaku style. But simply because lemongrass uh, is not a common ag agricultural product in Japan, it, it hadn't been on the approved ingredients list. But it's an absolutely delicious drink i really enjoy yeah. it with with uh with bubbles uh like oh, in a, wow. the lemongrass highball is just really really nice and i actually what i discovered with the lemongrass is um on a whim one time when i was when i poured myself a, a highball of that i i put a, a a sprig of rosemary as my as my as my garnish and it was just really really nice so that was a really nice uh surprise when when they brought out that lemongrass and then they followed with a really fantastic green tea yeah uh, oh, i've you. almost killed that bottle i'm gonna have to re-up on the green yeah. tea yeah we've Udeshino. talked about these guys before and they're really good yeah Udeshino is pretty close to arita so arita is where uh mizu shochu is made and Udeshino nearby is really famous for their green tea and the mizu green tea is is a is Arguably, even nicer than the lemongrass. I mean, there have been other green tea shochus uh, exported, but uh, 
I really think the the Mizu green tea is at the at the top of the heap. Really, really beautiful drink. So, um, really, yeah, I think it was Mizu primarily that was responsible for me shifting my thinking about these aromatic shochus and, and starting to really appreciate them. There are a few yeah. other oddballs that um, that I have uh, that I do enjoy. Um, one is the the milk shochu. I actually like it. It's it's so lactic. Oh, okay. And and it's pretty fun. Uh, I got that here. So I think I might have talked about it last week, but um, this is actually made yeah. from from cow's milk, and uh, it's got a little cow on the label, which is pretty hilarious to me. Of course it does. Yeah. Look at that cute um, little cow. But I'd never owned a bottle. I'd always just had it in bars, and I I was like, I should get one of those just to have it at home and haven't cracked it yet. But it's a yeah, it's a like, obviously you're not going to get any. <laughs> Any alcohol out of out of milk, so <laughs> that's just an aromatic additive. Um, and then so I've got, just to, um, just to explain, we got Mark Car Carlson's comment up here from YouTube, and he's saying Umami Mart has this. I believe that's in reference to the Mizu product or products. So thank you, Mark, for that comment. And Umami Mart can I'm not sure if they can ship the or some products they can ship across the country, not to every state, but it's yeah. possible that the Mizu products are in that lineup that can be shipped. So sure, sure. look into that. Yeah. What else you got? Um, yeah, then this, this is actually, uh, Ureshino. So we'd mentioned Ureshino oh, okay. where the green tea is produced, but this is actually Genmai Cha. So this Genmai is, cha. yeah, this is a brown, brown rice. rice, brown rice tea. Shochi. And uh -huh. that's just got um, all sorts of umami. Really, really it's lovely good. drink. Yeah. Really like that one. Um, so those uh, those are all kind of fun expressions. And I think, um, how about you, Chris? Do you have any others that you really enjoy? Well, you know, I just sent thing? you one that I thought we could taste today. Do you have sure. a cup or something? I do. Um, I do. This is one that I talk about all the time. Uh, it's <laughs> kind of, it's, this is, it's, it's made from matatabi. It's a matatabi shochu and or this is matatabi leaf shochu and this is matatabi is translated as silver vine and this is okay. an approved honkak shochu agreement uh ingredient sorry and um it's it's the best way to ex explain silver vine is it's a cousin or maybe an uh, a, a distant relative of catnip and as you can see on the label, there's a cat in a cape or something on there with a hat oh. walking away from the camera. Okay. <laughs> um, and it's, what's it doing? Yeah, it's definitely, it's, it's windy out or something and it's uh, on its journey. And silver vine is, it's kind of like catnip for, for professional users, for heavy users. <laughs> a catnip will keep a cat pretty happy for a couple of hours but this you know silver vine is much more powerful apparently it's kind of okay. kind of the prescription level catnip so <laughs> i thought i thought maybe we could take a tour through this this is definitely um i think this is what would be classified as a an aromatic shochu the shochu itself is made where is this distillery it looks like it's in where are you nagano nagano prefecture so it's it's okay. up closer to me and and uh it is made from domestic rice and rice koji that's also domestic mm -hmm. and then of course these matatabi leaves which are the aromatic let's um let's take a sniff through this and we'll, i think hmm, that's interesting it's leafy this is 25 percent, i believe 25% alcohol. It's leafy, minty, viney, vinous? <laughs> Not veinous, Vain but vinous. vinous. <laughs> completely clear. And not objectionable at all. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, yeah, it's inoffensive. It is very, very vegetal. Huh. Yeah, vegetal is a good word. 
but it is that green leaf sort of fresh it is fresh i actually garden. remember this being objectionable the first time i tried it i remember it being like whoo that's gonna need to be mixed with something but it's on the nose anyway it's not it's not bad hmm so I'm, you know we, we'll issue a correction on air so apparently you can turn milk into alcohol and leave it to uh our, our good friend justin to to be aware of that he seems to know about all the oddball drinks uh traditions so oh just you just need the right enzymes to break the lactose down apparently so learning something all the time <laughs> it's actually kind of fun that's better than i remember yeah, okay. it's maybe quite, it's quite had a chance to breathe a little bit in your bottle well, I did, I did just open it in order to send you that sample. It's one thing that Stephen and I occasionally do, and we need to get in a better habit of is, 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 you know, sending samples back and forth. Sometimes I send blind samples. This time I actually labeled them. And fortunately, you can do that very easily and very legally in Japan without really any serious questions asked. The only question being how much alcohol in it so they can figure out whether or not it can be allowed on a plane safely um but what do you think about that it's all right isn't i mean it? it's i mean it's not it's got particularly some it. it's got a metallic finish it's okay. it's it's really astringent on the finish um it's starting as it, it opens up a little bit it's getting greener it's getting and the green is going from a mint to more of a uh more vegetal green mm -hmm. which is what i remember mm -hmm. i remember it being a much more vegetal drink and maybe maybe it is a matter of decanting it a little bit which is weird because usually it's the opposite with wine right you decant and you lose that mm -hmm. that greenness sometimes depending mm -hmm. on the wine mm -hmm. of course and this one's going in the opposite direction so that's kind of interesting do you have any any others any other um aromatic shochu that you can um talk about or yeah i mean well there's there i mean, guess i guess the big one in japan and, and it's available in many markets overseas is tan takatan which oh, had already right, been right, mentioned right. in the in the comments but tan takatan is not a honkaku shochu even though shiso mm. is an approved ingredient tan takatan's uh alcohol base is not made uh it's not single pot distilled it's not single pot distilled i believe they use some um they use some uh some sugars for fermentation it's not a uh it's a korui or i guess what would it would it be a, a konwa shochu or is it it's a konwa shochu? yeah exactly it's a konwa. okay so, so it's, it's a, a blend, blend of, of single pot single pot distillation single mm. pot distillation and then the multiple or the essentially a, a vodka very neutral mm -hmm. spirit ha probably yeah. very heavy on the latter yeah, and then using the the shiso leaves at whatever concentration to create that really really vociferous aroma. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and that that one it's it's interesting. Tan takatan. When I've tried it, the few times that I've tried it, I get a lot of almost um, seaweed kind of umami notes rather than the fresh freshness of the shiso. Okay. And uh, but then there's the shiso shochu from here in Fukuoka, uh, which I, I know it's I know uh, Ginza Berlin imports it, right? Um, oh, in Europe, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I don't. It I seems don't know like they it. do, or somebody does. Yeah. yeah, and that's a that's a lovely drink. What's what's the name of that? You you always it's remember called, it. It's called um, Yama Yamanoka, so Yama, aroma Yamanoka, of the mountains, yeah. or mountain yep. aroma. Yamaoka, yeah, I, I believe, is what it is. That's a very pretty drink. It's pretty low ABV, but it's a, it's I think a it's nice. Twenty percent. Yeah, I think it is too. Yep. Yep. That that one expresses shiso. That's like fresh shiso. Mm-hmm. Right. While still having some umami, it's not overpowering. That's a really interesting one. Yeah. I think that's a, that's yeah, a good example. That's a good one. And another uh, popular one in the states, actually, I'd forgotten. Uh, I think because I I feel like you might be able to extract some alcohol from the ingredient is the beniotome with sesame. Um, sure yeah you can but I, yeah but that's that's essentially an aromatic show too right a, a relatively small percentage of the mash bill is is sesame okay it's, a, it's really being added for flavor uh 
So that's a um, that's a that's a really nice one. That's it's essentially it tastes like black sesame ice cream. It's a it's a really nice drink, and if people people gravitate toward it once they discover it. Like, oh, I like that sesame show too. That's often one that if, if people have experienced it, they want to talk about. It's it. so it it can be really really satisfying. It's roasty. Yeah. It's toasty. It's nutty. It's grainy. It's familiar because everybody knows what sesame on some level. You know what sesame mm -hmm. oil smells like, and it's everybody. Yeah. Most people enjoy that aroma. So yeah, and so and here I, in Japan, there's a bunch of different expressions of it. It's not just one thing, like like it is overseas. And I I had I know some Benny Otome products have been showing up in the states. So I don't know if they brought over additional um, sesame or not, but I know that they've got some some other products that they've started to to import to the U.S. Um, so and then I think they like. I remember when I was at, when I visited the distillery, I think they had like three different levels of the amount of sesame put in. So you could try it at 5% of the mash bill, 10% of the mash bill, 20% of the mash bill or something like that. Yeah. And that was, a, one, was two, an interesting, three, those, interesting those flight to run square, through. Like, yeah. Those were, those were really, mm -hmm. those were fun. Yeah. Pricey. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then the Benny Otome gold, I guess, is the, what, the casked sesame shochu. Is right. that right? And, uh, Jesse Fallowitz of Mizu Shechu, that was his favorite for a long time. Okay. It was been, been able to make gold. Gotcha. He really got a kick out of that one. Um, That's a fun one. Yeah, any other, let's see. Yeah, I mean, I've oh, tried yeah, all sorts of oddballs. You know, yeah. our friend Ochi down in Miyazaki made a garlic shochu, I think as a challenge, as a dare. <laughs> I mean. I remember that. Yeah, if you think, you know, if you think Jägermeister is, is a tough, tough one to put down. Just, just try it. Garlic shochu. That stuff. Oof. I never need to try it again. <laughs> yeah, that there's a, there is a pretty wide spectrum of really interesting aromatics that have been used, and mm -hmm. and Ochi mm -hmm. certainly is one of the more. He's kind of a mad scientist down there in in he is. Miyazaki City. <laughs> I so mean, and when he put out a bunch of stuff that's fun, but yeah, when you, when he tastes you on that, he kind of almost has an evil grin, like he knows yeah, it's you're, a bit of a dare. By it. He's like, you don't have to try it. But of course you want to because it's like yeah you have to try it when he mentions it, especially yeah. if you're in his distillery. So, that's right. Yeah, he has the he has the piment or the green pepper yep, the as well, right? that's and then, I think that's also in Europe. I've seen that on yeah. Oh, and his green Berlin's his uh, sorry Instagram. Yeah, and his ginger shochu actually is in the U.S. That's right. Oh yeah, I didn't even think of that one. His ginger is it Rihe mm -hmm. is in the states. Yeah. That's an interesting one. So if you can find a bottle of that ginger shochu. Go ahead and grab it. Um, it, I think that's a good cocktail mm -hmm. um, ingredient. Yeah, yeah. And Ochi is always experimenting, and sometimes you know, he'll tell me what it is, and if I don't have a translator with me, I've never heard of this ingredient before. <laughs> you and know? then you're just like, why, why? Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I was bored. <laughs> yeah, um, and he, yeah. It's yeah. a, it's a really interesting subcategory of the shochu industry and it's probably going to grow as people iterate and try to differentiate and so mm -hmm. we'll, we'll keep on if we we notice anything really interesting then we'll we'll mention it here but uh yeah that was a very very concretely packed with examples main section of this um show tuesday so nice work and i know and i and i bet as soon as we stop talking about it, there's gonna be like five more examples that pop into our heads mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. Um, yeah, get out there and, and try some of this stuff as you can in the comments section. Holy crap. There were like 10 comments while I wasn't looking. Um, yeah. great the, folks. The, uh, yeah. I mean, in just going in, in a little bit different directions, we've basic, mostly been talking about sort of aromatic herbs and, and those kinds of botanicals, but then you go in the other direction and you've got all the different kinds of mushrooms, right? You've got shiitake and, uh, you know that sort of thing that are that are often used, and also different kinds of seaweed. Um, you know, there's yeah. kombu shochu in uh, pretty popular up in Hokkaido, uh, sure. and different things like that. So there are other other styles, sort of the other end of the spectrum as well. Um, and your book has you've got all the different approved ingredients listed, right? So it's, it's a good resource if people want to figure out what's. Yeah, um, and yeah, absolutely. So you can you can get a better idea of what's possible and some of those ingredients you're gonna be like huh what is that um but there's there's a lot of variety there and they are mostly as steven indicated before they're regional agricultural products in many cases such as water chestnuts for instance mm -hmm. and um 
and aloe, you know, so, uh, although I'm not sure how much aloe is grown in this country. I know that some is produced in Okinawa, but I'm not sure where else they make it. Probably mm -hmm. some of that stuff is imported. But, uh, yeah, really interesting creative side of shochu that is, there's a lot of lot of curveballs in that part in that segment so it's yeah. it's probably we'll try to keep a better bead on those things if people are making new new stuff and we'll mention it here but before we run out of time because we're already at the half hour mark i kind of wanted to move into the last section i have a feeling that we're going to stick with the aromatics here a little bit but what have you opened recently ah uh, yeah actually <laughs> as you, you, ask that question he just starts looking yeah. around oh well, let's see no, it actually, um, you're right. It is actually uh, green tea shochu from uh, Kitaya, which makes okay. Gyokuro is the export brand that's available Gyokuro. in the States. Yeah. Is that the same? Uh, that's the same juice? No, this is actually different. Um, that's a different one. And I had only, I've actually found this bottle on the remainders table at my local liquor store. Okay. And it had a really old clasp on the top. And I, I contacted the distillery to find out when they stopped using that, that seal on the top and they couldn't tell me but it it was uh a um it was bargain i think it was a i think it was basically 10 bucks for this e-show bean right? oh jeez yeah <laughs> it was on clearance and uh Get i guess this it was the last one yeah and 10 dollars for 1.8 liters of 25 percent alcohol yep honkaku shochu yeah okay. and that, can you read how that? is it Sorry, is it huh? it's really nice it's it's okay. uh it's green tea I, it's not it's not mizu as far as its quality. I guess it looks like five percent of the Mashville is is green tea. Five percent, um, okay. Yeah, but it's you know the the other Kitai expression, the the gyokuro, which is uh, currently available in the states. To me, that also expresses a little bit like I was talking about with tan takatan. I get a lot of umami. I get a lot of seaweed notes. I get a lot of kombu on That's on cool. on on the green tea from the other green tea from Kitai. I don't get that at all on this product. No. Um, yeah. Oh, this is called Tenno Miroku. Yeah. Miroku. Tenno, Tenno Miroku. Miroku. So, um, and then it's funny because I I went into another liquor store last week as I was I was doing a little hunting for some some new and interesting things, and he had these all lined up. Like he apparently really likes it. But the other the other places like get this out of my shop. Uh, there they have it a nice nice end end shelf space and you know, <laughs> but it was all the Kitaya products because it's a Fukuoka distillery so i think they yeah, must they're be probably tight the and oh that's that's interesting yeah huh. so that I, i'm glad i opened it finally i'd had this bottle since uh, i picked it up i think early in the pandemic actually and it just sort of been sitting in my closet and then i was like and i was i was wanting something it's summertime now right it's get, it's gotten warm so i wanted something that's gonna go good with bubbles something refreshing something i hadn't tried in a while so i cracked that open poured a glass and i mean you can see i've i've done a little bit of damage it's become my my sipper recently yeah so i don't i don't mind it at all um yes yeah, so that's that that was my my newly opened i guess 10 bucks for a iso bean of of half decent shochu i mean geez winner winner yeah, i mean the, the one iso bean that was available in the states for a while was monzen and that was going for what about 130 150 dollars a bottle of liquor stores <laughs> well yeah, with the limited quantities they were able to get their hands on and actually import, you can kind of understand that. Yeah. Uh, my my recently opened, and this is as of like a day or two ago, is is this ishobi of Hachiman, um, which which is a sweet potato shochu made by Kora Distillery down in Kagoshima, and it good. It's really really yummy. I drink it uh, with hot water as I'm want to do, and you I actually summertime. found it online and on uh secondary market on the on the auction site so i got a i got a six pack of these guys <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and i and, and i'm I, not okay. lying I'll, I'll hold up the box yeah so he did in, in this gigantic box as you can see there's so, there we go so yep. that's about yeah. good yeah you got your your hachiman and I remember you being surprised the, the first time I bought a bottle of that. It was actually in one of those sets where you have to buy both to get, you know. Um, yeah, you, it's weird when Hachiman was Hachiman the is the Hachiman's the add-on bottle. That doesn't make any sense to me. Because usually yeah. it's really hard to find, generally yeah. speaking, yeah. outside of Kagoshima. Even in Kagoshima, it's hard to find in bottle shops. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I went into, when I 
when I was in Temmonkan, this is probably a, a two-year-old story, but one time when I was in Temmonkan, I was really looking for a bottle of Hachima. And I went to Kosero, and I don't think they had it. And then I went to some other place, and they didn't have it. And then I, the last place I went, they have their bottles on the second floor. It's right in the middle of Temmonkan. I'm sure Maya knows exactly where I'm talking about. And I was looking at the, the shochu selection on the second floor. It's kind of a little regional, almost like a Kagoshima goods shop, I, if, I, if memory serves. It's right on the corner. And the woman was surprised that I was looking at the shochu, of course. And so she started a conversation. I said, you know, I'm really looking for Hachiman. And she's like, oh, well. And then she... <laughs> Under the counter behind the register, she had one bottle. She's like, I was actually planning to take this home, buy it and take it home myself. But I guess if it's going to a safe home, you can buy it. But I'm like, really? You're going to let me have it? She's like, yes, on one condition. You have to give me a hug. And I was like, <laughs> what? Well, I can do that. That's no problem. So I gave her a hug. And, and uh, I think the hug was a joke, actually, because as soon as I came in for the hug, she started squealing. She's like, ah! like that and then anyways i paid for the product and, <laughs> and got out of there um That's but funny. yeah that was a that was a that was the only time i've been able to find in recent memory a bottle mm -hmm. of hachimang in in, uh, in, the wild. in a regular bottle shop mm -hmm. it, and it it kind of felt like it was luck it really was luck. it was behind the counter under under the counter behind a curtain yeah, yeah we uh we have a Kagoshima and tennis shop. It's and it's only for shochu here in Fukuoka. It's near uh, Tenjin, uh, a little south of Tenjin, on on the on the walk down to Watanabe Dori. There's a, a Satsuma bottle shop, and it's it's and it, I I think it's an antenna shop. Like they've got all the glassware and that sort of thing. And so you can often find those pretty rare Satsuma shochu in there. It's not just the main stuff, but I just always forget to go in there because I've got all my regular local bottle shops that have shochu from. Fukuoka, Noita, and other parts of this of the of the region, uh, rather than only Kagoshima. But I, I should go in there and see see if they've got Hachima, because I believe I've yeah. seen it in there a couple of times. I'm, yeah, I'm sure there are specific accounts where they have a pretty steady supply. But Koda mm -hmm. doesn't make a whole lot of that product, even though it's their. I I would argue it's their flagship, but mm -hmm. the volume is just such that they they don't really put it out. There's not a lot of places that carry it regularly. Sure. So when you see it, get it. And I saw yeah, and it's a, a sixer of it and I got it. Yeah, it's a it's a big full bodied sweet potato show too. It's not for the faint of heart. So yeah, it's a it's a yeah. good one for sure. I only ever had that one nine hundred, um, which I uh finished. You know that that story of it being the plus bottle, I, I had the same thing. It was a plus bottle online. I think it was maybe it was last year I mm -hmm. bought maybe it was Banazuru or something. And each will be into that. And then the the plus bottle was, and it was essentially free, was mm -hmm. Hachiman. And it's weird how, I mean, that's that's yeah. a definitely a dealer loader. Absolutely. You're going to, sure. if I see Hachiman as the, oh, we're trying to get rid of this as well, then whew, that's a hell of a deal. Yeah. And was it a 900 as well? Because I imagine the 900s aren't as uh, it sought after. It was a 900. Yes. Yeah. yeah the 900 form factor is, is pretty weak generally. Um, a, a lot of bottle shops don't want to carry the 900s because they're Those not are even dumb effective. shapes. 900s are yeah. ugly, usually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the Hachiman's actually in the better of the two forms that we it's, commonly it's see. It's like it's yeah, it's tapered like in a different way. So like Isa Daisen and and Yamato Zakura are also in that 900 bottle, right? But you uh -huh. don't see that bottle often. It's still a, it's still an oddball bottle. We'll have to uh, get our hands on on examples so that people can see what we're talking about. The standard shape is just what you see in every convenience store, and that's just not attractive at all. It's not that nine hundred bottle. But then the 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 one that Hachiman Yamato Zakura and uh, is just is, passable. Is, yeah, just passable. It's interesting. Yeah, I don't yeah. completely hate it. Mm -hmm. Only mm -hmm. a little bit. Yeah, stick right. with seven twenties, folks. I think that's just, you just got better yeah. variety there. Although everybody uses the same damn shapes anyway. Um, but this, but the 720s cool. are often the ones that are being given as gifts, right? And the 900s are more just for home consumption or being or bottle keep at izakayas, right? Like when you go in a department store, you you know where they have the nice liquor selection because they're intended as gifts. You never see the 900s. 
See, I uh, for me, it's always the opposite up here anyway. The 900s are the gift bottles. Really? Yeah. And they're... Wait, so is that a... correct? Oh, no, no, no. I take that back. No, you're right. The 720s are the... Like the... Seven, the um, the Kurokirishima 720s, this really squat, round-shouldered bottle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it actually costs more than the 900. Yep. And yep. it's like, why? Why? Because oh, it's, it's, it's supposed to be a gift. I'm like, well, but... But, and I think it's an acknowledgement that the 900 is butt ugly. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, if you're going to give somebody a, ni a nice product, you're going to give them this slightly more considered form factor. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the 720s sometimes are the, the gift. I don't know. I don't know yeah. what, if you're giving a, if you're giving that as a gift though, I'm like, just yeah. give somebody a thousand <clears throat> yen, Jesus. Sure, and maybe just to explain to people why these are the fill sizes is it's it's all based on the on the ichigo on the go unit of of measurement right, which is a, a standard unit of rice. It's 180 ml, so four go is 720, five go is 900, ten go is 1.8, right? And that's that. These are the standard fill sizes for Japanese uh, alcohols. Just for people who are. Multiples of 1.8, and if you're at home going, man, that's weird. Yeah, hey, it uh, is. If you're you're probably from America, and you're you're not using the metric system, so you have no. Yep. <laughs> um, exactly. Yeah. Twelve inches but, and that kind. Yeah, of it was basically a standardized cup size for uh, for food rice for a meal for an adult. It's supposed yep. to be that amount of rice is what you needed, and so it's a uh, pretty fun. Well, good. Okay. This has been a this has been a an interesting but, episode. I'm gonna make sure that I'm. Have we missed yeah, one, any comments that we need to talk about? One last about? comment. Sure. We've never shown shochu in a carton, and it's funny you mentioned that. Ah, so that's, be, that's good timing, Chris. This was going to be next week's uh, topic, maybe. <laughs> we we but, get um, a sneak preview. Yeah. yeah so yeah, this next is week actually, actually an awamori uh, in a carton, thirty percent alcohol. Awamori, sorry. Awamori, yeah. So thirty percent alcohol, one point eight liter. Uh, carton, very light, easy to carry home for the housewives and the and the old men. Uh, you don't break it if it drops, and and so that's these are actually the same fill sizes. I don't know if I can get in front of them. Right, right. So so both both um, is so. Yeah. You don't see them. I mean, you see cartons a lot, but you don't usually see really really good shochu in cartons. You it's don't. More mass you market really stuff. don't. And I'll, I'll save what this actually is for for. Next that won't, a, that might not be next week because next week we're going to be focusing on sweet potato shochu just as uh, yeah, a heads up right. to everybody, uh, which we haven't done for a little while. We're going to get into the the, um, the 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 stuff that we drink all the time sure. at home. And, yeah, that's well, also our, yeah our sweet potato uh, podcast episode will drop on Monday. So drop on Monday, so it's going to be good timing. Yeah, yeah so, so we'll if, talk you're, about that. if you're in a couple of weeks, preparing we'll for that, that one next week, make sure that you have some sweet potato shochu ready to go. And if you don't have any at home right now, then please go out and find some and we can uh, compi together. All right. Yeah. Any, any final thoughts? No, I'm good. I'm uh, looking forward to trying some more of this. What is it called again? Matatabi. Shochu. I, I need to mix this with some bubbles. I think, I think that's how I'm going to. I think, I think in, a, in a Sonic, it could be interesting. Mm -hmm. So a little bit good. of sparkling water, a little bit of tonic could have some magic it's got some legs yeah. on it look at it or it's marbled anyway huh it's very interesting and it just gets more and more vinous as it as it opens up anyway good that that concludes episode number 54 the aromatic shochu episode at least part one of the aromatic shochu episodes i'm sure we're going to revisit this topic sometime this summer um and next week as we said We'll be back same time, same place, talking about Sweet Potato Shochu, and hopefully you can join us again then. Thank you to all the people on YouTube and Facebook who have been commenting, and the banter is fun to watch. And as you notice, we drag some comments up here occasionally, so uh, don't be afraid, don't be shy, chime in, uh, make some friends. And thank you for your continued support of the Japan Distilled Show Tuesday drink morning drinking party here in japan or wherever you happen to be in the world and from both of us here in tokyo and fukuoka to all of you a very hearty and heartfelt kanpai kanpai <laughs>